So with this new patch coming to Shipwrecked Early Access, a new character was also released along with it. The Weber and Walani video series were introduced by a Final Impressions video and a Special Tribute video, respectively. For Warley's intro video, I'll be looking at the patch notes. This is what I'll probably be doing for every subsequent character that I'll get released from now on. So let's get to it. I'll just start off by saying that the Hang 10 patch was absolutely awful. I really didn't like it. The patch broke the game more than it fixed anything, but I'm glad that the negative side to that patch has mostly been resolved by this one. The current patch is called Eye of the Tiger Shark. It was released on Thursday, January 14th, 2016. The first section is regarding world changes. Crates now wash up on shore and can be hammered for surprise items. This is definitely a step in the right direction. One of the main problems with the game right now is the lack of late game incentives and long term sustain. Ultimately, it's up to the player to find things to do after surviving for thousands of days, and it really comes down to their creativity. But having these built in incentives doesn't hurt either. Depending on what these surprise items mean, this could be really good or really bad. It could function like a mini slot machine and give some really nice stuff, or snakes, or spiders inside. Or monkeys. Let, let, let's not have that. Uh, even with the monkeys, I guess this would be a fun change. However, it could also be overkill on resources, kind of like the floaty boaties after the Hang 10 patch. Depending on the frequency of the crates appearing, they may provide too many resources, like the floaty boaty knights give away too many gears. I really like features like this because it adds fun randomness to the game that usually won't affect the difficulty of the game. Given Clay's history for items like these though, it'll probably take a while for them to balance it properly, but this is a great start. Maybe we'll get more obsidian, maybe we'll get more gold finally, maybe we'll get other cool stuff that's only in ROG and they transported it over through the crates. I'm looking forward to it. The new set pieces and new treasures are kind of along the same lines, so I'm just going to say the same thing. I'm all for new things and surprises. A new character was added, Warly the Chef. This is the character I'll be playing for this video series. At the moment, I don't know anything about the character, except that he probably has a crockpot that he can carry around with him. And given how broken some of the crockpot recipes are in Shipwrecked, he'll probably have an accelerated early game like Walani does. Except, instead of having really strong exploration in the early game, he has really strong sustain. Also, maybe like Walani, he probably lacks late game. And the focus of this character is to provide a fun, unique, early game experience. Basically kind of how Clay designs most of their characters. But you know what? Here's the hoping that he breaks the mold. I really hope that he will be different. The Tiger Shark and the Shark Kittens. Finally. This was the first thing that we saw in that trailer many months ago, and it's finally in the game now. I checked the new recipes for the new craftables in my existing game, and it seems like you only require a few of each of the new items dropped by these new mobs. Currently I'm thinking that the tiger shark and the kittens are probably like the tusk. They only spawn in a specific season and they're limited spawns of some kind. I also saw a picture of the shark kittens, spoilers, and it seemed like they had feet. So they're likely amphibians. They can likely survive on land as well as in the water. I'm actually really excited for this new addition. Plus, I'll have new creatures to trap in my base. <laughs> The Doi Doi is kind of in the same category, a new pet for me, I guess. Uh, somewhat low spawn, most likely, but higher rate than the Tiger Shark, just based on the requirements for certain recipes. I'm less excited for this one than the Tiger Shark, but then again, I'm probably just going to use them as pets. If anything can be trapped, I'll probably trap it. In my Weber game, the only new mob I could trap properly was the Crab. Every other mob had some issues with them, so maybe after this patch, they'll have some companions. Now to the actual changes. Map unfogging is reduced on boats and when using telescopes in the hurricane season. I'm kind of indifferent about this change. It's just another hardship to add to the hurricane season. They're really promoting the season as the anti-sailing season, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. You don't want to be sailing during a hurricane, and that's just stupid. There's more incentive for you to use the pirate hat now for increased vision while on the boat. The next change is kind of weird. You can no longer plant trees on the magma rock biome. Uh, I say it's weird because this was a change that was added in the Hang 10 patch, but it wasn't documented. Now this isn't the first time Clay mentioned a previous change in a new patch, 
and I don't expect it to be the last time. It probably has to do with internal release dates or internal patches that we don't know about. They probably have certain cutoffs and maybe something slips through ahead of schedule. It's probably what it is. It's not really a big deal. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why I kind of hold off on my judgment on the patch. I don't want to judge it based on the notes themselves. I don't want to judge it after like 2-3 days. I want to at least play it for maybe 2-3 weeks. There are usually some undocumented changes and bugs that you'll find just by playing the game more. As for the change itself, it's just like any other rough turf in the game. You just want to plant a soft turf in its place, then switch it back to magma turf after. Now I'm saying you're supposed to plant the soft turf because the neutral turf in Shipwrecked is actually beach turf, and most plants cannot be placed on beach turf. It's different from ROG, and I don't like it, so this is one of those things that I hope they decide to change in the future. Prime Apes no longer pick up Mandrakes. This is another one I'm indifferent to, but some people should be a little bit happier about this one. I never use Mandrakes, and since Pan Flutes are renewable through Trial Netting, it makes no difference to me. Next patch, just remove monkeys altogether from the game, and I think we'll all be happy, right? Hail no longer damages things. This was by far the worst thing ever in Shipwrecked. Notice, though, how it's not listed in the bug fix area. Despite what they may have said in the past, I'm pretty sure this was an intended feature, one of the seasonal effects. The nomadic style in Shipwrecked is highly encouraged, and in my opinion, it's very fun. But there are players out there who like to build bases, and I don't think they should be punished by having the hail rip through everything. I'm glad this was removed, and I hope it never ever returns in any shape or form. Seriously, it was really bad. Don't Starve already lacks late game incentives in general. Shipwrecked or ROG, doesn't really matter. But especially for Shipwrecked in its early access form. Removing traditional base building is just plain wrong. Now there was some positive to this. While the hail was still disruptive, I started thinking about new ways to build bases. I guess it ended up being a learning process for everyone. I have some pretty cool base ideas now that I'm eager to work on in future games. Seafood gumbo is easier to make now. Great. Food in Shipwreck was so hard to get before, so making it easier to make these items? It's awesome. Well, that was sarcasm, by the way. There's way too much food in Shipwreck. The one thing about this change that kind of concerns me is, now that it requires less fish, what does the previous recipe turn into? How does this affect other crockpot recipes? Hail is no longer a valid crockpot ingredient. I think this feature was one of the most ridiculous ones from Hang 10. The hurricane season was basically meatballs falling from the sky because you could use hail as a filler. It also made the abundance of ice-related recipes even easier to access than they already were. And they were really easy before. But again, there's still too much food in Shipwrecked. I think this is a step in the right direction, but there needs to be more drastic changes to make the game harder. The bow torch recipe was changed. Two boards and a torch was the recipe in Hang 10. Now, I don't know who at Claire Cappy thought this was a good idea, but it wasn't. There are so many recipes that are gated behind research machines that require basic items. The backpack, uh, the refine tab in general, these are perfect examples of this. There's no reason to change twigs to boards. And also, why boards? Twigs don't turn into boards. That doesn't make any sense. I'm just glad it's done with. As for this entire bug fix section, I don't really have much to say about it. I've only encountered about half of them, but I always say the same thing about bug fixes in every single game. It's a good change, and it should make the game a little bit better. It also brings us one step closer to leaving the early access state for Shipwrecked, so that's also good. As for the things that weren't addressed this patch, I'm just going to go over some of them briefly. Flooding is still an issue, it still bugs up most of the time, it's still unintuitive, and it's really annoying. The volcano season was over nerfed, it's way too easy, they should probably look at it again, tweak it in the future, but at the moment, I think it's more manageable for more players now. Late game incentives, this is a really big one. I don't know if they're ever going to fix this, but as a player who just survives for thousands of days, I'm really interested in more late game incentives. We're already seeing that Clay is interested in bringing more late game incentives into the game. An example of this is the Through the Ages patch in Don't Starve Together. Eventually it'll probably make its way to single player, but why not have more? Why stop there? Why not continue to improve your game even more? I think that Don't Starve has a lot of potential still, and in the coming years maybe we'll see something even bigger than before. The thousand day, two thousand day stuff. I'm all for it. 
Now as we draw near the end of this video, keep in mind that I like to approach the patches without looking at too much information. The less the better. It makes the game a lot more fun and surprising, so we all learn together with these videos. The questions and assumptions I made in this video regarding the patch will likely be addressed as the video series goes on, so I hope you enjoy this adventure with me. And as always, remember that YouTube is not live. If you want live content, including this Warly run, come join me on Twitch. The link is everywhere on my channel, description, about, main page. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this new series.